In this lesson, we're going to be evaluating trigonometric functions using reference angles. And this lesson basically ties together many of the concepts from the past few videos. So we'll take into consideration the special angles, the trigonometric functions of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Also, the idea of the signs of trigonometric functions, depending on what quadrant you're in. And so these are the types of problems that you would not be allowed to use a calculator on. So we'll start. Um, we want to evaluate the sine of 135 degrees. And so there are three basic steps that we want to use. The first thing we're going to do is determine the quadrant in which theta lies so that we can determine the SIGN, the sine of our answer. We're going to find the reference angle and determine the trigonometric function of that. And then we're going to combine those two steps together to come up with our answer. And so this first problem is the sine of 135 degrees. So when I draw 135 degrees, that brings me to the second quadrant. Now if I think of all students take calculus, I know that in the second quadrant, sine is positive. So I'm going to put in a positive, even though it's redundant, just to stress the fact that I know the sine of my answer is going to be positive. The next thing I need to do is find the reference angle. The reference angle is that acute angle that your terminal side makes with the x-axis. So if this angle is 135, then the reference angle is going to be 45 because it's 180 minus 135. So I know that the sine of 135 degrees is going to equal the sine of 45 degrees. So we use the SIGN because we know our original angle falls in the second quadrant. We're using the reference angles because the ratio of that triangle, the ratio of the sides of that triangle, uh, of that reference angle, are the same as the trigonometric function of the sine of 135. And so now, if you know the sine of 45, which you should know from memory or from your triangles or that table, the answer is going to be the square root of 2 over 2. All right, let's try the next one. We have the cosine of 4 pi over 3. The first thing I want to do is draw 4 pi over 3. And since 3 pi over 3 is the same thing as pi, I'm going to write that right there. When I draw 4 pi over 3, that brings me to the third quadrant. Again, using all students take calculus, I know that the only thing that's positive in the third quadrant is tangent and its reciprocal. So I'm going to rewrite this. I know that the cosine is negative, so I'm going to have negative cosine of my reference angle. And the reference angle in here is going to be the difference between the 4 pi over 3 and the 3 pi over 3. This little angle. So my reference angle is pi over 3. So I know that my answer is going to be negative because I'm in the third quadrant. I know the cosine of pi over 3 from the table again or from your triangles. You should have memorized these by now or be able to draw that chart on your own from memory. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So the answer to the cosine of 4 pi over 3 is equal to negative 1 half. Okay. The next one, I've got the cotan of negative pi over 6. When I draw negative pi over 6, that brings me to the fourth quadrant. And the only thing that's positive in the fourth quadrant is cotan, excuse me, is cosine and it's reciprocal. So cotan is negative. It's going to be negative. The opposite of the cotan of my reference angle. And my reference angle is that acute angle, the positive acute angle, which in this case is just going to be pi over 6. So I know my answer is going to be negative, and it's going to be whatever the cotan of pi over 6 is. And the cotan of pi over 6, again, from your table, or if you've memorized it, is going to be the square root of 3 
just the square root of 3. The last one, the secant of 9 pi over 4. I'm going to draw that angle. This is 4 pi over 4. This would be 8 pi over 4. My reference angle, this is going to be 9 pi over 4. The reference angle, I'm, I'm, I'm brought right back into the first quadrant, so this is going to be the same as the secant of pi over 4. Reference angle is pi over 4. And the secant is 1 over the cosine of pi over 4, so the answer to this is going to be the square root of 2. So I'd like you to pause the video and try to evaluate the next few problems on your own and then start the video up again to check your work. All right, starting the cosine of 150, we'll draw 150 degrees to find the quadrant that we're in. So cosine is negative in this quadrant, in quadrant 2, so I know my answer is going to be negative. It's going to be the same as the opposite of the cosine of whatever the reference angle is. The reference angle for 150, since this is 150 and this is 180, the reference angle is 30. So we're going to have the opposite of the cosine of 30 degrees, and the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, and that would be negative square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 7 pi over 6, I'm going to draw 7, 6 pi over 6 is the same thing as pi. When I draw 7 pi over 6, I'm just 1 beyond. So my reference angle is pi over 6, and I'm in the third quadrant. All students take calculus, so sine is negative in the third quadrant. My reference angle is pi over 6. So the sine of pi over 6 is a half. This would be negative 1 half. Two more. I'm going to draw negative pi over 4. That brings me in the fourth quadrant. All students take calculus. Tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant, so I'm going to have the opposite of the tangent of whatever my reference angle is. My reference angle is the positive acute, which is positive pi over 4. So we're going to get the opposite of the tangent of pi over 4, which is negative 1. Okay. Last one. We want the secant of 7 pi over 3. I'm going to draw 7 pi over 3 by first putting, this is 3 pi over 3, so this would be 6 pi over 3. So when I draw 7 pi over 3, that brings me to the first quadrant. Everything is positive, or all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant, so I'm going to have a positive secant of whatever my reference angle is. If this is 7 pi over 3 and this is 6 pi over 3 here, my reference angle is just a positive pi over 3. So I want the secant of pi over 3. Secant of pi over 3 is the same thing as 1 over the cosine of pi over 3. And the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So we would have 1 divided by 1 half, or the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. And the answer is positive because we're in the first quadrant. So to evaluate or extend the special angles, we basically can evaluate without a calculator any angle whose reference angle is one of the special angles. If it's 30, 45, or 60 degrees, we do that by first finding the quadrant with which the angle lies to tell us the sign. We find the reference angle because the the ratio of the trigonometric function of the reference angle is the same as the trigonometric function for our original, and then we combine the sine and that value together to get our final answer.